I'm sure I said in one of my videos a few months ago how cool it would be if they brought back something like the Honda Prelude. I can't remember which video it was. So you can imagine my surprise when I read that they have indeed decided to bring it back. And it looks really, really good. I'll put some pictures on the screen now for you. Uh, so I think it looks fantastic. And I think they always did, even the, like, like the very old ones. Uh, but they didn't really sell that many. I think in total they might have sold, I think it was 300,000, but don't quote me on that. Uh, in the worst year, they only sold 10,000 for the full year. So I thought, let's talk about what we know about it, and uh, which is not that much, actually. And uh, let's just go have a look at some pictures, have a nosy at it. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Ben Alexander, and I make <clears throat> excuse me uh, EV news videos every day, and uh, I talk about the latest EV news from all around the world. And I love making these videos for you all, but it's even better when YouTube actually decides to show you my content. So if you are subscribed, then uh, just make sure you've clicked, or if you aren't subscribed either, either uh, just make sure you've pressed the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, and then you can make it so that the notifications actually come through to you. Uh, so to start with, it looks fantastic, I think, doesn't it? Uh, it's a two-door coupe, which is quite underserved, I think, in the EV world. And I've never been a fan of the two-door, uh, just two-door cars, really. I once had a two-door Fiat Punto years ago. Uh, but just because of the lack of practicality that they offer, and when you chuck groceries into the car, I often go... Uh, for the, the back or the sides or the front of my car. Uh, but it would be nice if you could just use the back door, chuck stuff in your back seat, which is what I commonly do. So for me, that's not really a, a great fit. If you could just lob stuff in anywhere, the front, back or sides, I think that's like an ideal thing for someone like me. Um, I don't see the actual advantage of a coupe versus a four-door, other than rigidity in the chassis and body, and maybe it just looks more sporty, but I don't see an actual advantage other than that. The Prelude EV was revealed at the Japanese Mobility Show, and uh, to be honest, it probably won't sell that well, which is really sad, isn't it? Uh, which I think is a shame, because it's really, really nice. It's hard to place the Prelude in the EV market, especially considering the growth uh, in the competition uh, from other EV manufacturers. It isn't likely to be considered any sort of rival uh, to just about anything. Certainly not the Tesla Model 3, that's for sure. Although I think there will be some people that are keen to go and have a look, and then there'll be some people that are keen, if they've got enough money, to go buy one. Uh, you know, I'd be one of those people. Uh, I'd be interested to go and see if it's something I'd want to buy. But I have to say that I wish they would have just made Honda Jazz EV with 85 horsepower, 50 kilowatt hour battery with LFP cells with proper cooling on. But alas, that's not what they are doing and that's not what they're making for sale yet. And if they could cheap out on some things like just offer steel wheels and basic tyres and non pearl paint, then I would be pretty chuffed to be honest. I really would be. Just a basic Honda Jazz type EV. That'd be awesome. From Honda. How cool would that be? Jumping into what we know and don't know, we know that we don't know almost anything about it. But they are likely going to use the same battery as the Honda Prologue, which I talked about recently. And I'll link that in the description underneath the video, and I'll also put it on the boxes at the end of the video for you. Uh, so that's it's likely to be um, 85 kilowatt hour battery with decent range. And if they could offer the Prelude with that battery, and half decent power and not ask for stupid money, they will actually possibly sell some cars, which I think is what they need to be doing. Uh, maybe just trying to lock in some brand loyalty at this point in time could help them in a few years when there is more competition. And uh, people do like to stick with the same brand when buying a car. So 80% of UK motorists have had more than one vehicle of the same brand. And I'm one of those people too. I've had a couple of you know, types of vehicles from a couple of different manufacturers. Uh, so we've got no clue on price or power. But again, it's likely to use uh, the motor setup from the Prologue, which is great. The dual motor setup for the Prologue has 288 horsepower. So it's not like a supercar or anything. And uh, Honda haven't said the power figures for the single rare motor version yet. It is said but not confirmed to be for sale in 2026 
to 2028 but we we just we're not sure really uh we know the car is coming they've confirmed that but we just don't know much about it which is a bugger i think uh so they have some big plans for releasing evs to the market 10 new evs to the market to the world by 2030 that's what they say so that's like one every nine or ten months or something like that isn't it honda make great cars and their evs are awesome to drive awesome to drive awesome to be in uh, they generally just look really nice, I think. But I just wish that they didn't say that they want to make elements of their cars a subscription, like a subscription-based thing in the future. Uh, things such as the ability to use certain apps in the car, like Google on the screen in the middle, or you know, a variety of other features, like I think it was like, like cruise cruise control things you can pay them extra but you have to subscribe it's not like you're purchasing them for your ownership of the car like tesla um it's, it's kind of like they want you to pay a bit of money every month so you might end up paying 30 dollars a month so you've got cruise control and google maps and all that sort of stuff and that's kind of said that that's where they want to go i don't respect that i don't like that at all so that really bugged me when they said it and i hope they don't do that in the next 10 or 20 years but if there is anything that we are learning in the past two or three years we've just entered this next era i think in time so i think the last big one before this would have been just when the internet came out and social media and now we've got sort of ai and the you know information controlling information and some like really crazy big things happening especially with ai it's moving way fast so when you think you know something and you wait two years, you then don't know something. It's crazy. Uh, so data control and the way we buy things over the next 10 years is all going to change bonkers fast. And it's all changing so fast that even the government can't write up uh, up-to-date papers on their plans with uh, using things like AI. So there's a huge you know, talk now with AI specialists around the world basically saying that it's not a question anymore, but they fully expect things like the US election in 2024 to be altered by the spread of misinformation online using things like bots and spam. So basically, when something is said on a comment section that potentially is negative about, like, Trump, for example, it will get rebutted within minutes by a computer somewhere in the world uh, that comes through the web, basically. That's what they're saying. And uh, they can they can do that. So it's good for people to know that in the car world, in the tech department, and the way manufacturers deal with what you buy and how you buy it, where the data goes, uh, we're no longer we're no longer in the same sort of format as we've been in for decades. You know, 70s to 80s, 80s to 90s. I know some people will disagree with that, and they think it sounds a bit crazy. As I'm sure you're all aware, there are some people that write very clever comments on my videos. So just take a browse see what people are saying about it because it's just like an interesting thing that's going on we're in we're talking about tech here it's quite fascinating and it's kind of relevant uh i should probably mention that they did stop selling the honda jazz in australia recently so it's quite unlikely that uh, in australia you'll see an electric jazz in the next five years and they've not even confirmed they're going to make one so just as a follow-on to my last video too, some people have been saying that the BYD seal servicing costs are too high. They seem pretty reasonable to me. Definitely not extortionate, which, you know, I don't think it's extortionate. What do you think about it all? Uh, the servicing costs for the BYD seal are structured in a way that servicing is required every 12 months or 20,000 kilometers, whichever comes first, and the costs for the first eight services are priced at uh, $189, $370, $189, $449, $449, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $450, $